Good evening, and thank you for joining the Walt Weekly Monday Night Live. My name is Walter Latham. I'm your host, and I'm joined by Michelle Sweeney McCombs. Tonight, we have a great show in store for you. You know, we're going to talk about things that are critical to our resistance, and, and we're really not paying a lot of attention to it. And tonight's special guest will be shedding some light on it. It'll be a learning experience for our listeners. And that is our mission right here at what the Walt Weekly Podcast. So with that said, I want to turn it over to my partner, my co-host, Michelle Sweeney McCombs. Hey, thank you, Walter, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Walt Weekly Monday Night Edition celebrating Women's History Month. Thank you to our live audience for joining us. Please follow the Walt Weekly and share this podcast by clicking the share button below. The Walt Weekly is brought to you by Michelle Sweeney Skin and Hair Care. Our intro and outro music is provided by Uncle Nephew. Today's special guest is a native of Staten Island with a unique, unique career with over 30 years having worked in diverse business environments ranging from choreographer, performer, in the entertainment industry as a sort after 90s hip hop dancer, fashion producer, and management to high end toy companies in New York City. This is a diverse background that has enabled her to appreciate, adapt, and understand an individuals' specific needs to achieve desired, measurable, and specific outcomes. So, having that said, she is an incredible real estate background of 16 years, consistently at the top of her game, top producing associate broker, closing multi-million dollar dollars in annual sales with a vast expertise in many aspects of real estate, residential, commercial rentals, new construction, development sites, hotels, and, inve and investments, and much more in the real estate industry. She is also... Uh, very, very busy as a community, in the community. Yeah, very, extremely busy person. She's advocating for the homeless and securing permanent housing for families in need, a life committed to service as a teenager, community advocate, start, starting the first Urban League Youth Council on Staten Island. Her life has come in a full circle She's honored to serve on the following board of directors in a nonprofit community that tirelessly champions the voice of those in need. Minority Women and Business Association of Staten Island, first vice, vice chair and membership committee chair at the Community Health Action of Staten Island, which they just had a fundraiser last week, Friday, which I was ecstatic to attend and I had an amazing time with her. They had their fundraiser. She had also does fundraise development committee chair, historic Tappan Park Community Partnership Board, Richmond Family Care Center Board for the federal federally qualified health care center, a new designation being applied for. She serves as chairwoman on the board of directors, board member of the historic and prestigious St. George Theater all in Staten Island. She's a, also, she wears a lot of hats, but she also <laughs> has time. She has time. She's an avid gardener with soulful roots from the Eastern Shore of Virginia. She, oh, that may be good yeah. for me. <laughs> so, you know, her, uh, she has you, Go, you Grow Girl, a Facebook page she created during the 2020 pandemic, which allowed her to share her lifelong passion of gardening. Inspired, she's inspired thousands to start their garden, which is amazing. We started one too. She plant swaps, she garden events and day trips. It has pivoted to another business called City Bell Gardens, a 501c3 pending nonprofit with the goal to educate, inspire, empire, empower, and create a community of cultivators, both young and old. Her mission is to place a garden on every windowsill in the world. It's a global effort to live healthier, encourage food sustainability by controlling your food source from the ground up and how your health will thrive. Her garden is her solace and revolution. Please 
Walt Weekly family and audience, welcome the dynamic Dana Walker Boyd. Welcome, Dana. Woo! Thank that you. was a lot. That, you wear a lot of hats. That sure is a lot. Wow. And thank, thank you for you. making time for us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank well, you. We, we speak truth, and uh, you have an amazing background. Uh, this is Walter and Dana Walker Boyd. Welcome yes. to the Walt yes. Weekly Podcast. We really yes. appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Oh, and uh, and you mentioned uh, you have uh, Eastern, Southeastern Virginia roots. Yes. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Well, first, let me uh, thank what? you both for, <laughs> Michelle, thank you for making the call and reaching out to me. I am so Thrilled, excited, and also overwhelmed uh, wow. in a good Thank way, you. all in a good way. And that's because uh, I'm really excited about the work that I have been doing uh, my lifetime. Yes, so Mr. And we appreciate Mason. that. <laughs> Thank you. And thank um, you. Look at our audience coming in. We yay. have council member Camilla Hanks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank coming you, in. Yeah, we have a lot of people in from North Carolina, New York City. Oh, this is broadcast right. live from New York City. We thank you all for joining the Walt Weekly. Everybody show some love in the chat room. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to leave for Ms. Boyd, she would definitely appreciate it. And so will we. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Walter, you were saying? All right. Now you're making me feel old. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I uh, the yeah. right way. I'm Walter, right. yeah, Walt, Walt, Walt will be okay. good. Right, yeah, okay. thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I see you got some uh, Virginia southeastern roots. Uh, sure what general do. area, what town? Uh, these are your parents or were you born down in uh, yes, no, Virginia? I, I am a native uh, Staten Island. I'm born and raised in New York. My father is from the eastern shore of Virginia, right outside of Maryland, Salisbury, Maryland. And the town, to be exact, is Exmoor, Virginia. Oh, OK. Around the Chesapeake okay. Bay area. Absolutely. I, I was, oh, OK. All yeah. right. But I'm further south. I'm, I'm from North Carolina, northeastern okay. North Carolina. They're, they're close to Roanoke, Virginia, Norfolk. So oh, that's yeah. where I'm from. And I was born awesome. there, came up here as a kid. But anyway. I, I mean, your, your experience is so varied, you know, that's it one is. thing about people that come from the South or, you know, their, their, their ancestors, well, we all, you know, with the migration, but we, we, we work many jobs until we find that one that's right. And uh, I see that you have varied experience, experience coming yeah. from hip hop. You are, a, you know, a, a, a hip hop dancer, choreographer. I mean, you got such a very back, rich background. Thank you, thank and you. That, yeah, that I, tells me that tells me you're a hardworking lady. Definitely, I sure am. I sure am. And you know what's beautiful about the work that I do and the work that I've always been able to do is that it never felt like work because it was my true passion just coming out in a most organic and natural way. And I was able to, you know, work and navigate so many different uh, arenas from fashion to toys to hip hop. And it all just uh, makes me a wonderful person that I am today. And it allowed me to really explore the, the world and really see how culture, art, um, how it's all connected. And that's one of the things that is a common denominator, you know, for all people is our music, our culture, our arts and our history. OK, Amen. that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, OK, well, one of the first questions I have for you when I was thinking about this. But first, let me speak to the fact that you've been in real estate for 16 years. Yeah. So. What do you think uh, is the most important change in the market, i.e. regulations, laws, policy, and then COVID? Okay. So um, as it relates right now, what I believe and know to be that this has happened in the last 16 years, we've had a, I was licensed in 2005, 2008, 2009 is when we had that market crash you know, the financial districts, the collapsing, the auto industry, and most importantly, the housing market. So that um, we have we have recovered from that. So I'm very happy and uh, elated to see that the housing recovery has come back where 
at that time, uh, there were a lot of people who were homes were underwater and they were they weren't they didn't have the same value that they have today. We have since recovered from that and the financial market crash, as well as the auto industry is booming. And all of that is thanks to uh, President Obama. There's also been additional protected classes under the federal laws and regulations. Uh, right now, we have extremely low interest rates. You know, uh, money right now and borrowing from lenders is equivalent to, you know, borrowing from an uncle, I like to say, whereas those interest rates are very low. Uh, the banks also have uh, incentivized first time home ownership and their, the lending has definitely opened back up full speed as it relates to the initial COVID uh, halt on the world, so to speak. Okay. COVID has also changed a lot in the ways that we do our business as it relates to real estate. There's additional disclosures and documentations that need to be made and also, uh, you know, uh, sanitary protocols that also have changed this market as well. A few months ago, the uh, runner is some type of support that they provided to runners, you know, during COVID that expired. Is that now... Those people, what, what happened to that? I don't hear anything else in the news about that. Yes. So you're referring to the ERAP or the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. That program is actually, it has uh, dissolved, but there are some monies available for about a um, hundred, a little over a hundred thousand applicants. So there are still a temporary assistance that's available. There's quite a few opportunities um, for people who need rental assistance. There is still money available. I'm speaking as it relates to the New York City area, but I've also done some, you know, uh, searches in the tri-state area as it relates to New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and all of those still have um, a variety of uh, rental assistance. There's one-shot deals through the HRA account, even if you are employed, you can get a one shot deal that will help you pay for your first month's rent um, uh, security, as well as um, your broker's fee. And that is set up uh, through the HRA, Human Resources Administration. And you can also, uh, you know, you pay that back. So that's one of the ways in which you can, um, if you need additional housing uh, rental assistance there, there's also senior citizen rent increase exemptions. There's uh, disabilities for rent increase exemptions. Uh, City FEPS is another uh, city organization that um, works with people who are under, you know, the 100% uh, poverty rate and poverty line in New York. There's a lot of vouchers that are continuously being given. So in my opinion and what I deal with, there is still some money available. You just have to do a little bit more in terms of research. But one Google uh, inquiry will get you started in the right direction. It's a lot available. Yeah, because the news uh, made it sound like I'm a getting a getting what's coming. Mm-hmm. You know, there was just all these people were going to get put out, but all of a sudden it just died out. You, I, you know, I didn't hear anymore. It's not uh, mm-hmm. something that's you know at the top of the news now. Right? So, no, it's uh, not. It's not. Well, the moratorium. Is, I mean, you know, COVID has impacted. Uh, landlords, homeowners, as well as renters. So it's not just only been the imp- the impact that it's had on the renters. It's had a dire impact on homeowners and people who may have just, you know, a two family house and they have no rent, you know, for a year or two, you know, when there may have been rental assistance out that the tenant may have not gone to get, you know, so it's a, it's a full circle a problem. The courts are back to work as it relates to um, evictions, but those things, is, it's going to be a real slow opening of that. Um, the attorneys that I work with, you know, it's not like everyone is just going to be tossed out on the street. They're really trying to mitigate those those problems as well. And one of the ways is to also try to help these landlords catch up with what it is that um, they have not been able to do so. And that's because of the lack of rent. Right. A lot of times I, I don't look at the other side. You know, there's two sides mm-hmm. to every coin. You got the yeah, runner yeah. and you got the landlord. So Absolutely. Yeah, they, they both have a responsibility. They do. That's right. They do. That's right. So real quick, I'm going to introduce our weekly panel member, Christopher Sweeney, 
CEO of Johnny Roof's Steakhouse and retired, recently retired New York City sanitation worker. Welcome, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Good, e- good evening, folks. And it's Johnny Roof's Smokehouse. You're going to get that right eventually. Oh, my God. Smokehouse. You should be beaten, right? <laughs> we're not a, we're, beat me. We're, we're not a steak. <laughs> We're not a steakhouse. Don't get don't get roof Chris after me. <laughs> hey Chris, when we did the show Friday, did I pronounce it correctly? You sure did. I did. Listen, <laughs> sorry sure guys. Did. CEO of Johnny Roof's Smokehouse, folks. My bad. I was thinking of steak. Okay, so that means there you have you to go. make this. You, you must. Uh, I got catering. you covered. You got me covered. I got you covered. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm well, no complaints. Listening in, liking what I'm hearing so far. All right. right. You're very distinguished. You know, a lot going on with you there, young lady. <laughs> Thank you. I'll start by saying God is good all the time. Right, all, all the time. All the time. All the God time. is good. Yes. yes. And, and I wanted to just add something to that moratorium. People, we, we really don't pay attention to it until it's coming up and it's ending and then it gets all the news coverage and you know the hysteria mm-hmm. going that goes along with uh, people being put out of their homes or potentially being put out of their homes yes. they never speak about it in until it's uh until a dire situation so mm-hmm. it is it's a dire situation but until that clock is ticking then they give it the news coverage that it deserves but Hopefully they could come up with some really good creative. They're going to have to be creative this time around because there's a lot of people in trouble, landlords and tenants. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That moratorium is definitely I mean, it could really open up the floodgate of homelessness. But I don't believe that the municipalities and the, the city, state and federal government are just going to allow it just to be, you know, a free for all where um foreclosures are happening and evictions at the same time. So I'm, I'm sure that I'm hoping that there's going to be a better plan as they start to release the valve on that um, moratorium that's been uh, across our entire country, the entire United States, pretty much. Absolutely. There have been okay. some foreclosures happening because uh, that moratorium was more for federally insured uh, loans. It really wasn't the case for private lending. So there have been foreclosures, there have been evictions, not as many evictions, but there have been foreclosures that have been happening. That's a lot lot of people Mm -hmm. were taking, uh, they were getting a lot of relief and a lot of help, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't really stopping, you know, their payments. It was just being put on the back end. And a lot of those uh, mortgages that are set up that way, or a lot of people that worked it out with those banks that way, as soon as this was lifted, they needed to start figuring out how they were going to pay this money back. So I'm just concerned. It's a, it's a concerning thing. And uh, considering where we are with the homelessness now in the country, especially in New York City, I, I would hope it would be a miscarriage of just, justice if they let this fall apart. I believe we have the right administrations in place and we have, you know, we have a new, you know, mayor and a whole, you know, I believe 35 new city council members in New York. I think we're going to be on, on the road to, um, you know, some really strong support as it relates to uh, landlords and uh, tenants. And it's always been there. And if we get the, the uh, act passed with uh, president <clears throat> Biden, that also it has relief relief in okay. there as well. Can All you right. Now I can yeah, now, yes, you're good. You're good. Thank you, okay. Dan. Okay. I mean, I'm wondering about the future of New York City residential housing, you know, since a lot of people can now work from, from anywhere. So mm-hmm. are you seeing, uh, you know, you, you're right there on, on the front line. You're facing the renters that, that want to, you know, live in Manhattan. Are you seeing a lot yeah. of that? Has that oh, it had to pick back up? Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I believe overall, yeah, it has picked up. Was that mm-hmm. it has definitely picked up. I mean, the last count that I saw a couple of weeks back was that there were about 320,000 people who have left New York. And that was during the whole pandemic when it was a really, you know, it's still a hot topic button right now. You know, COVID has not left us. 
but it's now just being more managed. And there are, you know, um, the luxury market in New York is definitely bouncing back in a very strong way. Um, the affordability of rents are starting to go up again across the board, especially in New York. Actually, you know, I've, I've been used to uh, having bidding wars for residences for homes. And now we're actually having bidding wars for apartments. And that's something I've never seen before. It's a little frightening, but it is actually happening. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I would think the opposite. You know, everybody, you know, since you can work from practically anywhere, well, that's driven by what you do. You know, it's, yes. well, let's say technology, for instance. You can work from yeah. anywhere in the country. And there was a, uh, I was reading where there was an outflux of people from the north, mm -hmm. from the cities down to like Kentucky and those small places like that. Absolutely. And that the property values there were going up. They are. Nationwide, the values have gone up. You know, it was a big exodus from, from New York. You know, we're New York, we stack on top of each other. So people wanted to not have a, a, a neighbor right next door, above, below, you know, be covered on all four sides. So they went to uh, these different uh, states so they can be spread out, have more space. You know, you get so much more for your money, um, depending on what you like in a home, you know, in other in other states. And it also, you know, for me, uh, I know a lot of people not aren't necessarily coming back and remote working definitely changed uh, the game as it relates to, uh, you know, uh, people being employed. You know, remote work was essentially only for senior management and they could work from home maybe one day a week. But, you know, COVID taught the world and taught employers that. Uh, employees can still be extremely productive. You can hit your bottom line and everyone can be at home, you know, in the safety of their space and still be a uh, great employee. So I I'm glad that that has happened. I, you know, for many years I was a commuter. I took the Staten Island ferry. Um, there's probably a few ladies on here as well, uh, especially Camilla Hanks. We were on that ferry for 10, 15 years straight. And, um, to not have to spend an extra 20 hours of your 40 hour work week commuting is right. definitely a gift that people that employees right now are able to receive. And I didn't have that. <laughs> I mean, you can work and you can do your laundry. You can cook. I mean, just <laughs> it can go on. <laughs> you know, some people multi multitask yeah. themselves out. Right. But, right. You know, the ability to be able to do that is, is, is really great. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. Michelle, are there any questions from the audience? Any questions from the audience? No questions from the audience other than Class 1 Probe and Undisclosed Location in the Pacific. Thank you for okay. shouting out where okay. you're from. We have some people from all over. Thank you for shouting that out. Uh, no audience questions. We can continue. That's something yes. to, yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead. to the uh, high-end luxury buildings in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. So... I was reading an article in Market Watch that stated that they were concerned about a year ago that those buildings wouldn't be occupied again. But what they were finding, even though many people enjoyed staying home and it was a great thing working remotely, quite a few people needed the work environment to go back to like it was it was affecting their mental health. Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies were saying that were looking to not rent any of these corporate spaces started to change course on that because they were kind of, mm -hmm. it was kind of the being at home was affecting a lot of their workers, a lot of their mm -hmm. key, mm -hmm. key personnel. And they, and they said that they were going to change course on that. Yeah. I so could definitely it, see how it, that could be for sure. I mean, everyone was isolated, you know, we had to, be apart from each other in every single way, aside from your initial pod, you know, so I can see that definitely being uh, right. with, uh, a, a cause for concern big time. Yeah. As good as it is for certain people, it's not so great for other people. Like everybody has different reasons. Some people have kids, family, and the kids were going to school. So it was very helpful for those folks, but mm -hmm. there are other people out there that needed that work environment to keep them going and they didn't get it. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's Absolutely. good to keep the, the luxury market going. Cause if the luxury market kind of teeters, 
kind of affects, kind of snowballs into everything else. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, Dana, how do you uh, see the landscape in terms of commercial uh, rentals? You know, these large corporations realizing that, okay, yeah, you know, my my people can work from home and I can still achieve my uh, objectives. Mm-hmm. And productivity can maybe be a little bit higher, actually, because, right. you know, I used to work from home and mm-hmm. I used to, you know, literally I would work harder from home than I did in the office. Right. OK. Right. By the mere fact that I was off site. So are you seeing a drop in uh, commercial rentals you know, for, for these large corporations? You know, not so much. Well, yes, there has been a drop in office leasing um, as well as, you know, all of the. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, hotels, you know, everyone was impacted by COVID. So it's just really starting to get bounced back. You know, you have a lot of brick and mortar, a lot of retail or companies that have closed tons of restaurants. Um, right now, I think we're at the still at the beginning of the rebuilding phase as it relates to uh, retail, leasing and um, office as well. Uh, I'm sure a lot of leases have been have been renegotiated from clients who may have had a 20 year lease. Um, I have not had to do that personally, um, okay. yeah, but I do have commercial leases that I am uh, writing and we're getting clients into spaces that they they want to be in. If they're starting their own business, it also started a different you know level of people opening up their own businesses as well. So I've seen it on both sides with people renegotiate their lease terms and also with people uh, stepping out on their own and starting new businesses. And they're, they're needing those types of shops if they're not an online e-commerce business. Right. Mm-hmm. I have an audience question, Walter Shelton from North Carolina with the property value increases. Is it a good time to purchase investment properties or should we wait? So I believe that you don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and then you wait. So if you have the means in which to make uh, a purchase, I would definitely recommend you, you know, seeking, you know, sitting with a, your uh, mortgage broker, banker, your lending institution and, and seeing if those numbers work. And if they do work for you, I would absolutely say, yes, get in the market if you can. Thank you for that question, Shelton. I have one of my own throwing it off. Since the pandemic happened, a lot of people started working from home. We had to figure it out, you know, Mm -hmm. um, not knowing what the future was holding. So a lot of people started doing, um, you know, uh, converting their sheds into offices. Do you see people working from home permanently or do you see them going back into into the uh, commercial property? I mean, it's profitable to stay at home. That's Mm -hmm. my opinion. And I know on Staten Island, you know, we have a lot of home businesses, which I have one myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can't see myself going to rent a commercial property for a salon when I, you know, was able to figure it out myself. Do you see that business booming again as far as, you know, commercial property, especially on Staten Island? You know, as it relates to Staten Island, I would say, you know, I'm I'm, as I'm moving around on the island, I see a lot of businesses that have reopened as well as, you know, some that just have not, they have not survived. Overall, I think um, it depends on what type of business you're in, but there, there are commercial leases. There are people that are opening businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, again, people are doing a lot from home. I could definitely drive my husband crazy with all the projects (laughs) that we've done and the the properties that we own. But Mm -hmm. uh Overall, it, it's just whatever's going to really work for you and your bottom line. It needs to make sense. What right. I do know is that also some of the prices have gone down as it to, uh, as it relates to commercial leasing price per square foot. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I know um, the Empire Outlets, they figured it out with, um, you know, with the vending we were doing there. Small mm-hmm. businesses were having vending there and they actually allowed because they didn't open up quite a few stores there. So it, they allowed one um, uh, vending company, so mm-hmm. a, a group that they open up a store in there. And, you know, I know it's a struggle, mm-hmm. you know, for them to do yes. that. 
So um, that's what I was just curious about with commercial. Yeah, Empire Outlets. Um, I know at one point at the very beginning, they were at um, maybe about 65 percent leased out. And then, you know, the pandemic happened. I believe at this point they're now in the restructuring mm-hmm. phase because they have not been able to or whatever. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I believe it's the full global impact on people right. shopping. You know, Empire Outlets is also a, te- a tourist spot. New York has lost so many of our tourists coming into uh, you, into New York. So that is definitely hitting us first and foremost. We don't have the tourism dollars. It's really going to impact commercial, hotel, and all right. the hospitality. So um, that is a, that's going to be an impact on it as well. The more people right. start to come and, you know, we get back to our tourism numbers close to it. I think we right. see a lot of things continuing to open. Mm-hmm. That's and true. People are able to also work their business out of their home. They get their house exactly. certified and whatever um, licenses that you may need to to mm-hmm. run your business. You know, people are pivoting into other areas. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Utilize your space, your yeah. your own real estate, basically. You sure do. You know, so I just want to touch on something else. Um, low mm-hmm. income housing. I know there's a website that people can sign up for. For low income housing, um, when they build these new buildings or they restructure our old building, there's a limit to those um, apartments that they give. They may give like 20, you know, but then you have 10,000 people applying for it. You know, what do you think a good solution for that uh, low income shortage would be? Um, I think that they should raise the amount of units per uh, development. If they can raise that up, you know, if every developer can raise that 20 percent up to about 35%, that would definitely um, allow more affordable units right. to be done and to be developed. Um, I think there's also some opportunity for some rezoning. You know, in all of the five boroughs, we have a decent amount of industrial, we have manufacturing, we have a lot of buildings that are just sitting there, you know, not doing anything. They're shells, they're raw, and there could be some investment as it relates to that, to add additional housing units. But I think every, I haven't uh, looked at the five plan, five year plan in the maybe last year or so. So I have to take a look at that. Maybe I'll be back for a part two. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Please, please. I, I love that. I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> yes, I, yes. I do want to uh, you know, go back a little bit on, on the housing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have, we've always had this problem with redlining. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there are laws and policies and regulations that are in place. So the mere fact that a real estate agent can, uh, you know, direct a person to, let's say I'm black, right? So they're going to direct mm-hmm. me. I want to buy a house. They're going to direct me to a black neighborhood versus something that I can afford that meets my requirements. And one of my requirements is not necessarily to live in a black neighborhood. Not, that, you know, OK, but if I am, I am. But right. are you seeing those laws being enforced? Because I know they did an expose out here in Long Island where I live. Oh, yes. And redlining is an ongoing thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, so to answer your. So, yes, red, you know, the def, the definition of redlining is, um, you know, what financial and other resources are withheld from a potential customer who resides in neighborhood classified as hazardous to investment. And you're correct. That Newsday study that was done a few years ago in Long Island um, is something that is redlining in its purest form. It's on video. They have, you know, the, the, the black and the white and the Hispanic and everyone was treated differently and geared to different areas. Um, that's also steering. That is something that I absolutely do not under any circumstance do. In my business, I never have, and Lord and I, Lord knows my heart, I never will. So, but it is, it is something that that happens. It is something that goes on, and you know, at, in all honesty, it really comes down to what people are afford, what is affordable for them, you know, um, and that should determine where you're going to live, what the price point that you want to be in, and not necessarily steered to be in any specific community. So it's it's a fair housing violation on every um, aspect, but unfortunately it is it is still being done. 
okay. and what can be done about it. Um, right. More people need to be called to task. I think also um, offices and some certain real some offices may have a specific culture of how they do business away, you know, and those things are illegal and they need to be addressed. And people there are repercussions for uh, housing and anti-discrimination and fair housing. So they are people are being held accountable for it. OK, thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you for answering mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I know that's a very sensitive uh, topic. You know, it is. And even in my experience, you know, when when our parents were looking for a house uh, in Staten Island, they had to send their Caucasian friends to look at the houses for them before they can even get that. They came in on the second showing, you know. Right. And so it was really interesting. And that's 1970, you know, early 1970s. Early 1970s. Yeah. Mm-hmm, in Staten Island. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Came a long way. Yes. We wow. Have. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I know that you're an advocate, and I think Michelle touched upon this. You're an advocate for the homeless and securing mm-hmm. permanent housing for families in need. All right, yeah. now you, you may, I, I hate to be redundant, but Mm-mm. what are you doing about that again? So what I, what I love about what I do is, you know, my job in real estate is to help people find a place to live. Okay. As it relates to the homeless, um, you know, there, I, I've worked with so many different uh, city organizations and departments. Um, I have families that I work with that are in the shelter depart- in the shelters. I try to help to get them into clean, um, affordable residences for which they can raise their families in. Um, I put my landlords to task. I put everyone, you know, on message for advocating for people who are homeless. And there's there's also some misconceptions about homeless and homelessness. You know, you can become homeless from a fire. You know, you can become homeless being a victim of, you know, a crime. You can be a domestic violence uh, situation. There's all kinds of reasons that you can really be, you know, affected and and become homeless. You know, it's, it's a lot of different reasons. And it's not just because someone gave up or didn't, you know, wants to live on the street or, you know, just want someone to take care of them. There's a lot of reasons that people become homeless. Um, So with that, I'm in connection and in contact with a lot of different organizations, domestic violence, you name it. So it's my job. And I do that through the rentals. There's also a program that we'll be working with, and that is a section eight to housing. Uh, where I don't know, uh, a lot of people may not know, but Section 8, the voucher, you know, the federally funded voucher, you can purchase a house through Section 8. You can do that all through the middle, Midwest of the country. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can actually purchase a house having a Section 8 voucher and Section 8 pays the first 15 years of your mortgage. So that's really what? a win-win. Wow. You yeah. hear that, folks? Audience, you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Maybe. I heard that. Yeah, it's true. It's accurate. Now we need to bring that a little bit more. I know in New Jersey, a lot of people are able to get that, um, but it is available. It is. It is That's there. Great. You have to do your research. But um, in terms of the, the homeless, once I, you know, I have lo- long time, strong relationships with landlords, and as their vacancies are available, we we lease them. We rent them. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm, at least. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Can, I, can I ask you a question? Um, in some places like uh, Seattle and I think, uh, I believe Texas, they're tackling their homelessness in a different way. A lot of these places are doing things with these tiny houses and these containerized houses. How do you feel mm-hmm. about that? You know anything about that? Uh. Yeah, not as familiar with in those particular areas, but across the nation, yeah, tiny houses are definitely definitely a way to go. And the prefab, pre-construction homes, uh, people are using containers. There's all types of things. Um, Tesla, Elon Musk is just uh, he has a box. I think that's the name of the the house that he's creating now. Yes, it's and, a box. Yeah, yeah, the box. Um, yeah, modular housing is definitely the way to go in every way of development. Even the Barclays Stadium was a 
was a um, a modular build. Maybe people might not know that, but it was, you know, and that just allows us in this area in New York and areas where it's cold, we lose some time in terms of building outside because it's just freezing cold. The fact that they can manufacture these houses in factories and industrial facilities and then bring them and build them right there on site. Genius. I love it. Um, I'm still looking for more acreage and I definitely want to have a tiny house village. <laughs> As an interested, follow me. Because uh, that's where we're going. We're going um, to tiny absolutely house, interested. Yes. Tiny man. house village. And then we'll name tiny it. House. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Well, I grew up in a different time, you know, colonial, get to have the mm-hmm. steps and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, yes. yeah, things have changed. They things have. have changed. There's some really unique stuff. And for me, it'd probably be a second home, you know, a vacation resort, but it's a great first home too. If that's all the space you need, you know, it's up to the buyer to determine how much space that they need to be comfortable, you know? Okay. You mentioned uh, uh, the Section 8 you know, what you do in terms of purchasing homes. I mean, what about just a general home buyer? You know, what's, what resources are out there for them? Okay. So uh, I'm going to be speaking again regional in my area, but a lot of these things go nationwide. Um, for first-time home buyers, there's a tremendous amount of grants that are available. There's some great resources. Down payment assistance in New York, for instance, we have through HPD. Uh, the um, the home assistance program. And that program now is offering any first time buyer in the New York City area up to a hundred thousand dollar grant for the purchase of their home. So that is something that is on. You know, I have multiple contracts, multiple clients who are going to be recipients of this uh, down payment assistance. And where else can you get a hundred thousand dollars towards the purchase of your house? Uh, it's a great, great program. Um, we'll figure out how I can share these links with you all. Yes, I was I thinking of that. Out to your, I'll send a, 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 a series of links for all of this that we discussed, and okay. uh, you'll be able to share that with the audience. Um, okay. There's, uh, again, down payment assistance. There's a lot of different organizations. You have Neighborhood Housing Services. They are nationwide. You also have um, NACA, N-A-C-A. And that is another organization that has no money down, no money down at all for your house. And all of those loans are are backed by Bank of America. So it's another very strong program. There's also for people who are really, really starting out and may not even have the savings or may need that savings before they can get to the next step. There's also savings matching programs, which a lot of people do not talk about. There are a lot of different um financial institutions and charitable organizations that for every dollar you spend, they will match you for $4 up to a certain amount. So up to maybe 7,500, up to 10,000. There's a lot of resources. You just have to do some legwork. Uh, I know, you know, people, are qu- they want to move quickly, but I find in my business overall with working with these grants that honestly, it really only adds maybe another three weeks to you know, maybe a, a 65, 75 day uh, contract process to close. So it's really something that if you if you have, a, you should definitely pursue it. I would not leave the money on the table because it is available to you. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So Walter, hey. real quick, um, I just want to uh, get some information out there right now for Dana. Mm-hmm. She's very active in the community and she's uh, hosting on Staten Island, a Women in Business Expo on March 26th. And Dana, can you give us some information about that? I would like for people, our audience and everyone out there to know that this expo will be for women, bring your children. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be at a prestigious location. Can you give our audience a little uh, information about it? Yes. Promote so it. I- <laughs> I am going to promote it right now. Uh, so actually, this is uh, an event that is hosted primarily by Camilla M. Hanks, City Council Member, District 49. This is something that we um, had. We had two different uh, uh, programs scheduled, and it just seemed like the perfect 
opportunity to collaborate. And I was thrilled when Camilla called and uh, we narrowed this down and are, and are starting and ha- hosting the first Women in Business Expo in Staten Island. There has not been one and there are countless women in business. To date, we have over 50 uh, vendors registra- registered for it. It is a free event. It's free for the vendors to do their tabling. We have networking. We have a DJ. We have, and it's, it's at the most beautiful and opulent venue in Staten Island, and that is the Pavilion on the Terrace. And uh, I'll be hosting a women's business panel that day, uh, women building the blocks through business. So it's going to be a full day programming in Staten Island, New York, at the Pavilion on the Terrace. And that is um, Saturday, some March awesome 26th. panel women. Yes. From 11 to 4. And the panel, yeah, we just launched the panel today, the, the, the panel mm-hmm. flyer. So I'm just so excited. You know, what's wonderful about this is that, you know, with uh, the founding uh, partner for this, Camilla Hanks, she is also not only our councilwoman, but she is an entrepreneur as well. So she has been in multiple industries, multiple rooms for over 20 years. And she really uh, is going to bless a lot of people from coming to this event. It really is something uh-huh. to give you. I will you be know, there with bells on. Yes, yes. Be there. I know you have yes. your table. I got my I'll table, table, girl. Yes. That's right. uh, my panel is lead, lead women in businesses. Um, we have uh, Carmen Abercrombie from Sharing the Bliss. We have Keisha Weaver, who is the founder of the Pavilion on the Terrace. We have Shawnee Dix. Shawnee Dixon is on my um and she is Shawnee's house, premier chef. Oh, my goodness. Another great connection who is a friend and a client, uh, Dana Van Dyke. And she has an early intervention and learning facility on Staten Island. So it's really, really a nice. And don't forget women. Doreen. Of course. Doreen Cugno, CEO yes. of the St. George Theater, of which yes. I am a board member of as of January 20th. 22. I'm All so excited right. about that. Yes. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so this is going to be a phenomenal event. Um, it's open to any borough, correct? Mm-hmm. Not yeah, just Staten open, Island. It's open to any borough to come and participate. I'm not sure where our cutoff is with vendors, but you will see that on the Eventbrite. Um, Michelle, you are you able to share this? Yes, I'll share it. Yeah, if you can share I'll the link. share it. Uh, Dana, let me just point out to you and the audience that we do a broadcast, a rebroadcast of this program of our Mm -hmm. live shows. Uh, For the Monday night show, it's Thursday. Oh, Okay, we do a broadcast and it goes out to all the podcast platforms, you know, from Apple Podcasts to Google Play. So Mm -hmm. within the show notes of that podcast will be all of the links that you give us. Oh, fabulous. And this goes out globally but for what it's worth. You okay. know, it goes out globally. Yeah. All right? yeah. So uh, I just posted you know, that, the link for the event, bar. right? Oh, mm-hmm. wonderful. wonderful. The Eventbrite link is posted, folks. The audience, you can uh, copy and paste it if you're in the New York City area. Uh, the event is March 26 from 11 to 4 p.m. As yeah. she said, she's not sure about uh, the vending cutoff. I know. Um, it was at 60 from what I heard, mm-hmm. 60 vendors. Miss Keisha told me that. Um, but everyone is welcome. It's free, free, free. It is free. Free, free, free. Free to attend. <laughs> free, to, it's free to exhibit. You know, it's, it's right. going to be. A, but there will be food that is for sale. You know, the pavilion right. on the terrace will course. be providing the food for sale. But it is really going to be a fantastic event. I'll just put a number out there for myself if anyone is. Uh, interested in uh, further in communicating with me as it relates to real estate, I can yes. be reached at uh, 347-619-2997. You don't want me to put that in the show notes, do you? Because that goes out globally. So it's you have okay. people from it's Russia a, a, probably calling yeah. you. 
Hey, we take that international money. Hey, the international. I, yes, yes, we do. I don't know whether you yeah. want some rubles. You know, rubles, I, well, rubles, I don't know. That, yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even right going to speak on right. it right now. So, Dana, really quick question um, yes. in reference to the expo. I know mm-hmm. it's for women. Will they Are they allowing men to attend as well? Men are more than welcome to attend. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. You know, it's, it's Women's History Month. That's why we named it the business, you know, the Women's okay. Business Expo. No so we need the men. To sh- we that's need right. Men come yeah. out there. They will and come with your wallets, folks, yeah. too. <laughs> Yeah, right. come to get yeah. free information it's a free event to attend but please patronize the vendors as well the small businesses yes. that yeah it just makes your hey, Dana yeah let me uh, one, one second Chris please uh, just make sure that you give us an email with all those uh, important links so I that sure I can will. embed them in the show notes okay okay yeah. that's where we'll I'll capture that over them to you once we're once we're done mm-hmm. just a couple of points and clicks absolutely I'll have it over to you Okay, Okay. so she had something. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on something she said earlier about NACA. Uh, Mm -hmm. Back in 2008, when the uh, financial crisis hit, Mm -hmm. I was one of the people in, in, in a mortgage that I had a lot of difficulty with. You know, my wife lost her employment. It was a tough time. And NACA was a very good resource. They helped us a lot. Um, they not only get you, uh, they could get you refinanced or rework mm-hmm. your mortgage, but they get fixed rates that are really, really low. Yes. And, and they were a very good resource. But I, I do have a question about all the resources that are out there. What about the folks from, from, from our community who don't have the greatest um, credit scores and things of that nature? Mm-hmm. Is there something out there that with somewhere where they could work with them in, in that in that capacity? Yeah, absolutely. Once you uh, call any of the organizations for I'll just use uh, Neighborhood Housing Services, NHS, as an example. They help you get through the whole entire process prior to you, uh, you know, registering in this. What they have is their Star Briar program. Uh, you can register for the free classes because the education is a requirement. It's a HUD requirement. You have to have four hours of education from a housing counselor, which they are. So you'll you'll take a four hour course. You will get um, a certificate. They will also call you into the office and you will start, you know, what is calling the, the, you'll start the credit worthiness process. And from that point, if you're not able at that point to uh, qualify for a mortgage, they send you to you know, um, credit, credit repair and consultation companies that are also very, very low uh, charge. You may pay 50 to $100 for the entire process, not something that you have to pay on a monthly basis. Uh, those things are available. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things. There's apps that you can use to really help bring your credit score up. I know a lot of people have used a lot of different ways, but definitely through the community-based organizations, you can get that. Um, Absolutely. Assistance. I was, mm-hmm. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who lives, they live in Jersey city and they had to move recently. Mm-hmm. And the amount of money that they had to come up with for one month's rent or two months rent, one month security, it was, it was over $12,000 to rent a place. And I was trying to explain to them that, and this is like the third time they've moved in probably the last eight years. So uh-huh. I said, you keep coming up with those kind of down, those, those amounts that those fees, that's a down payment on a home. And I was trying to get them to understand it was, like, oh, well, uh, our credit, you know, I said, well, you got to work on that, but mm-hmm. giving away $12,000 to Ooh. rent an apartment. Yes. It's a lot of money. You know, it I'm is. just trying to get people to grasp the, the mm-hmm. concept of ownership because you don't own that. And you yeah. give up a lot of money just to be there for a certain amount of time. And you don't get that back. You get some of it no. back, but not all of right. it. Right. Yeah, you get the space, you get the, you know, the use of the property, but you don't get that money back. I know that there was some discussion about uh, being able to, uh, I think there's some entities, I haven't really worked on that yet that you can, that, that will give you credit for your, or give you a uh, credit on your, 
um, credit report for your your housing expenses as it relates to rent. So there are there may be some credits coming down the line, but there are some companies that use that and evaluate it for credit worthiness. So that's another way that that people are able to um, to do that. But you have to work on your credit. The credit is, it's fixable. You know, it's a few phone calls. It's some letters. It's, you know, a little bit of work, but you can clearly do it. You can look for certain templates, uh, letters that you want to send. You want the credit agencies to also prove that that is your debt. You know, there's a lot of different ways. You just have to take the time. But what I love now is that technology is so great that you can really get on apps and they can guide you through the entire Credit Karma, not, not giving an ad, but they are very good in terms of showing you how to um, navigate and, and increase your credit. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. All right, I got another question for you. I know we're pushing uh, against the clock here in mm-hmm. near an hour, but do you think we are in a housing boom or you just, you, know, you just think they will continue to rise? A housing boom, where, meaning... Uh, Similar to what we went through uh, for the, you know, that triggered the Great Recession back in 2007, 8, 9. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say that we're we're triggering that. You know, what's happened is COVID has happened and that has slowed down uh, manufacturing cons- uh, and building considerably. You know, uh, the, the, the high impact of the materials, you know, the materials have gone up two, three times over. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of issues with it, but it, yeah, I would say that we, we, right now at this point, we really lack in inventory more than anything. We're about like 1.3 million properties off of what we would normally have in uh, okay. uh, the supply. So the supply is, is very, very low. That's why the demand is extremely high. But no, I don't okay. I don't see this being a um a crash of what we had last time. No. Okay. I, and the I reason I asked that question is now because back then those mortgages were they weren't backed. You Correct. Know, they were a lot of bad mortgages. That's what kind of right. triggered that. Uh, right. So I don't exactly. see the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were just changing paper. <laughs> they were just so you don't see the predatory, you don't see the predatory lenders out there. I think, and, and no. then these charges of, of of secured mortgage, what do you call them, uh, CDOs, collateral debt obligations, things of that nature, that were based off of these mortgages. So that's not out there yeah. now. So that's a no. non-issue. Well, right? you know, anything can be an issue. I'm not, you know, an economist on this, but uh, in terms of what I see, yeah, I think it's, I don't think that's our issue. I think it's our lack of inventory and us being 1.3 million uh, houses in, in default, in a deficit. Okay. So mm-hmm. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So I got wow, one last question, question for you. <laughs> and I, and we, we've gone over the clock a little bit. I here. see. I see. All right. Yeah, it goes I, quick. I, I she see. She got to come back, Walt. She got to uh, come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Bring no her doubt. back. Bring, bring her back. Yeah, yes. yeah. Bring her back. Bring her back. <laughs> Absolutely. I see, I, I see that you are a choreographer, performer, video model, fashion producer, et cetera, along with mm-hmm. your, your being a real estate agent. If you could go back, would you change your trajectory? What would you, is there anything you would prefer doing other than what you're doing now? No, not at all. I believe that, you know, I, I was truly blessed to have uh, learned how to, to dance and be a performing artist. And I traveled the world. I believe that I am exactly where God intended me to be. I love what I do. And every capacity as it relates to people and home ownerships, relationships. I, you know, um, there's really nothing I would change. Honestly, it, it really allowed me to see the world in, in a pure kind of form, you know, at this, at that point, it's, uh, you know, we're with the, the celebrities. So you see, you know, you see it from the stage side. I, so I've stand, I've stood in front of a 10,000 person, 20,000 person audience. So, that's just prepared me to um, move w- with a level of, of confidence, understanding, and humility um, to be of service. Okay. 
All right. All right. Great. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Chris, any final words? I want to close down the show now because I know you got things to do and places to go. <laughs> Michelle? Well, it was a go wonderful first. show. Um, looking forward to her coming back because this... I just want to pick a brain, you know, really. And um, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I, we just want to help people. You know, we want to help yes. our community and, mm -hmm. and, and people in your position. A great asset to, to really give back and to just give out. You know, the biggest thing lacking in, in, in our community is information. People mm -hmm. just don't know. And if, yes. you know, it's put in front of them, they, they can really help themselves. So beautiful show. Thank you. All right. Yes. So I'm going to turn yes. it over to Michelle, but let me just yes. thank Dana. Dana, we are looking to have you back. Okay. Thank and you. Uh, this show will be, as I said, pushed out to the podcast platforms. So wherever you get your podcast, wherever mm -hmm. you get your podcast, you'll be able to find the show Thursday after 4 p.m. That is yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Walter. And thank you, Dana. I just want to personally thank you for coming on. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me into your world. I appreciate your invitations. And um, everything is always positive. She's always sharing information. She's a wonderful person. I'm getting to know her and I love her already. So I appreciate you and everything that you do in the community and for your family as well. Thank you. Thank you so very much. This You're is really a wonderful honor. I'm so grateful. And I've got to shout out my. Yes, yeah, shout guys. your people out. I yes. Shout out my husband, Lily. Yes. My sons, Jordan and Brandon, my fur babies, all of my family and <laughs> friends, the people who are listening, the people who hold me up. You know, mm -hmm. life is very interesting, but it's so worth living. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. That's all right. So and much. if you want to see her in person and meet her in person, make sure you come to the Women's Expo on March 26th. I put the information there. We will put it in the show notes as well. So if you're entrepreneurs or you're interested in uh, the Women's Business Association as well, there'll be a panel of women giving variety of information to you. So it's free, 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 free. Thank you, everyone, for joining the Walt Weekly Monday Night Live with our host, Walter Latham Sr., co-host Michelle Sweeney McCombs, our panel member, Christopher Sweeney. We thank our live audience for participating. Please join us next Monday as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month with Eartha Hicks, author and a Harlem uh, poet. Which she'll be joining us next week on Monday. Please follow us at www.thewaltweekly.com for our updates and Walt's Corner, his weekly blog. You can find us on IG and Facebook at The Walt Weekly, Twitter, Walt Weekly, Podbeam, The Walt Weekly, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and other streaming platforms wherever you listen to your live podcast. We thank you all for joining us. Be safe. Have, have an awesome week. All right. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night, Good everyone. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.